This is a quick demonstration of running OpenSSH on Windows 2016. This is nothing that's officially supportable. This is not a uh, a supportable solution. I think even the uh, OpenSSH builds themselves are pre-release only at this time. So this is just for discussion purposes and maybe for some troubleshooting. So I'll be doing a few things that are probably not recommended in a production system um, as far as like setting permissions and things like that to run executables and so. Uh, just again, this is absolutely not uh, something that's supportable or recommended. This is not a substitution for documentation. Just want to get that out of the way. One of the things I want to point out is this is a technical build, so this is not a uh, production build of Windows 2016, so if you're watching this a year or two later, uh, it's quite possible things could change. One of the first things I noticed is when I tried to launch Edge, uh, I get the message that Edge can't be opened with the built-in administrator account. Well, that was kind of a surprise. I understand there's a need for security and have the administrator account locked down, but um, in this case, we kind of need the administrator account to be able to run some commands. And again, this is just test purposes only. So I'll show you here how to how to disable that uh, lock. First, I want to give a thanks to Ben Ustam. He had a video that helped me troubleshoot this. I basically lifted these instructions right from his video, and I'm putting them in here uh, on how to uh, change this lock. So click on the link if you want to see the original video below. Uh, thanks again, Ben, for your help. First thing we're going to do is click on Start and go to Server Manager. We're going to click on Tools and go down to Local Security Policy. When Local Security Policy opens up, we're going to go to Local Policies and then Security Options. And we're going to scroll all the way down to the bottom and find User Account Control Admin Approval Mode for Built-in Administrator Account and click Enabled. Then we say OK. And then all we got to do next is reboot the server. Once the server reboots, you can then click on Microsoft Edge. You can see it opens right up. Next, we're going to go to a PowerShell GitHub link here to download the uh, OpenSSH installer. When we go to the link here, you can see that there's this uh, OpenSSH uh, kind of a, a code base going on right now. And uh, there's some instructions on how to install it. And we can cover some of this in a later cast. But uh, what we want to do is download the latest build for OpenSSH. I'm going to click on the OpenSSH Win64 version. And it's downloaded to my local drive. I'm going to click on Open Folder. And here I can see I have the archive downloaded. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, extract it to a folder uh, in the program file. So I'm going to create a folder just for it. Go to C Drive, Program Files, create a new folder, call it OpenSSH. I'm going to go back up to my Downloads folder. Now I can click Extract, Extract All. I'm going to give it that target destination I just created in Program Files. Say Select Folder, say Extract, give Approval again. Once it's complete, you can double click on the folder and see the contents of that folder. You can see the various executables in there. I'm going to go to Windows PowerShell, right click and say uh, run as administrator. Now I'm going to navigate to that folder I just created, the OpenSSH folder in the PowerShell window here. I'm going to change directory and then navigate to that location. Program files, using tab complete, OpenSSH, OpenSSH. If I do a directory listing, you can see it's all the same contents. So this is where things kind of start to get interesting is one of the things I did notice is that there's an ssh.exe there. And so uh, when I see that, I think, well, maybe that's something that I can uh, execute and run locally. So, so I run the command locally. You can see that there are some options there. Uh, one of the things that stands out is the user at hostname option. That's commonly how uh, SSH is used to access a a Linux box. So we're going to use that. I just so happen to have a Linux box that we can try this on. So I'm going to type in the command dot backslash SSH root at uh, 23.253.254.58 and hit enter. And I've been prompted to authenticate uh, 
saying, hey, we don't recognize this fingerprint. Are you sure you want to continue? Type yes or no. So when I type in YES and hit enter, I'm then prompted for the server's root password. So I'm going to enter that in, and now I have access to the root login on the server. We can verify that this is a Linux server by doing cat etsy red hat dash release. You can see that this is a CentOS 7.2 Linux system. We can run a yum command, a yum update, and hit enter. And press Y, say yes, this is OK to download. I don't know if it's the executable or the session with the virtual machine, but the refresh rate seems a little slow. So what I'm going to do, kind of show how the refresh rate is working, is I'm going to run a top command, T-O-P. Top is like a task manager for Linux systems. It has uh, system uh, stats like CPU and memory usage, things like that. You can see the refresh rate is kind of slow here. If you're familiar with how it responds in a terminal, you'll agree that it's a little on the slow side. So we'll cancel out of that. Then we can just type in exit to exit out of the uh, shell. And now we're back in the Windows PowerShell. You can see here if I do a DIR and exit, and now we're back to our files. So that's uh, OpenSSH on Windows 2016 in a nutshell there. Uh, you can go to the wiki page there in the GitHub and use uh, look at the uh, SSH usage examples and see other ways to use SSH. I have a suspicion. I, I haven't tested yet, but I think you could download either the 64-bit version or the 32-bit version and run it on a variety of platforms, not just Windows 2016. Hopefully this will help you better understand OpenSSH and how to run it on Windows 2016. Thanks for watching.